here with Ryan Rogers, Simple Rogers, who's a member of the U.S. Corrective Team, Para Team, since 2016. And we want to talk to you about the level of commitment that we've seen before and also after the pandemic. Before the pandemic, what we, also, we mainly focused on was discipline, because a lot of kids need that discipline. But since the pandemic has occurred, that we've noticed a lot of confidence issues with uh, children, but also teenagers. Right now, we're having teenagers come in that are very uh, recluse or really secluded. They try to hide their face because they're going through a mental uh, depression at this moment, going through anxiety and stress because of the uncertainty of the world we live in. And before the pandemic, we had many people that would commit for, you know, easily six months, a year, whatever. However, uh, even three and four year olds, we had signed up for three years and it happened six different times. We asked the parent, are you sure three times before you sign them up for three years? And they would say yes, but what we found during the pandemic it was very difficult for four and five year olds to even stay longer than a month and the commitment just doesn't seem to be there. So you're finding the same thing, right? Yes. After that, it's, I would say it's a lot worse, way worse than it was prior to 2019. 2019 was kind of like, I would say it was like the highest year because the economy was still going. Mm -hmm. People were still in their routine, like they're going to work, going to school, coming back, they're doing their regular average routine. Right. But the moment the pandemic happened, say around, say February or April. It was March of 2020. March. Yeah. So around that time period, it made people question what their routine of life was going to be. Mm -hmm. And it pretty much made them question everything at this point, especially what to do for learning, for the children, what are the children going to be doing since they're not going to be in school for the next couple of months to almost a year. Right. Which at the time people thought, well, it's just going to be six months. It's going to be two weeks here. And then as the two weeks go, they start adding more of, no, we're going to stay closer. Now we're going to be closed indefinitely. So now there's that wandering question of what, what do we do? Right. So while they're trying to keep their kids inside, trying to keep them safe and healthy, but there was a problem that was developing right underneath them. Mm -hmm. And that was a mental, it was almost like the social norm that a kid would do. They, they want to go talk to their friends. This is what they did through school. They get a chance to text and talk. Yes, they still were able to do that. But they couldn't communicate with them physically. Correct. So now that became this, this distraction of this social distancing. And it just became this riff of making a mental mind frame go, you know, from a routine until something that's not routine. Exactly. Teaching kids virtually, I experienced that last year. I'm going to interrupt you, but I was going to say, oh. teaching last year, my first time teaching virtually for three months straight, what I learned is that the kids that are ages five to eight were being coached by their parents yes. while they're trying to learn the physical techniques on a computer. And I can only imagine what the parents went through, them having to learn virtual school, which probably was not that successful. And this whole situation, uh, for the past year and a half has put a lot of people progressively and, ma and also maturity wise a year to year and a half behind. And so our beginner class we had for over 20 years, five and older or five and a half and older would go into that class. Now it's six years old because we found that the behavior of many children became much worse after the pandemic. And there's also dynamics that we have been able to identify that happen over and over again to where you cannot ignore it. At no point in time are we ever trying to tell a parent how to parent. We're just trying to make sure you're aware of these dynamics. And these dynamics do play a role in our success with the student, especially if they're a child. So the three things that we want to talk about that we've noticed is that we have sometimes a family that comes in and mom and dad are home and the child is not being disciplined. So the child gets to do whatever they want to do. And then we have to try to fix that or change that. But parents say, we don't want you to parent our kids. However, we haven't changed the way we, we teach. No. We are here to help instill manners, respect, and self-discipline and build confidence along the way. The other family dynamic is the divorce family where the child goes to the other family and they spoil that child and then the other family is trying to correct that child. I've mentioned this to so many parents. It's like They say, please make a video about this because I keep experiencing that with the, uh, the in-laws or the grandparents uh, spoiling the kids. And so if you're on the same team, it's going to be great. But if you're, if you're uh, spoiling the kid another kid is, uh, and the kid comes home and it's a different environment, they have to, you have to work a week and a half, whatever it is, to help that child back on that routine. This is before the pandemic we saw this as well. And then the third family dynamic 
is that there's no male role model at home. And therefore, we are the role models because all the teachers at this school are currently male, and we have a female or a few on the way up in the ranks. So those three situations, if, if that child's in the class, we're going to have a harder time teaching them. Now let's talk about the four family dynamics. And this graphic I'm putting up right now on the screen will show you this. First family is very strict. The child has no say whatsoever. And if the child receives a B in school, then they're harshly punished. It's a very strict environment. Family B is a very, very much more a more loving environment where they allow their child to have a little more say, a little more freedom in what they're doing in their life. But the parent guides them through life because they understand that the child is going through life and they don't want them to make all the wrong mistakes, but they want to help guide them. The third family dynamic is where the family gives the child even more say. And usually we find those children to be a little more whiny, a little more complaining. Also, they are perfectionists whenever they can do something right. They get upset. And so the parent kind of lets them um, kind of figure out life more on their own. But it's, it's very loosely guided. And then the fourth family dynamic is there's no structure at all. And the child basically rules the roost. And whatever the child says goes. And the parent is either friends with the child or they're not really parenting the child. Well, pretty much the kid rules the house at this point. Right. I mean, that's pretty much what that is. When we ask a child who's the boss and they're really young oh, and, and the kid uh, says me and all the people point to the same kid, then we have a problem because they look at that as being cute, but it doesn't matter what age they are, even if they're three and four, there's a control issue there and they're already gaining control. I made a video titled, Is Your Nine-Year-Old Talking Back to You Yet Five Years Ago? Because I know seeing eight-year-olds wear down their parents by whining all the time and the parent gets tired of it, so they give in. And then we deal with that situation as well. So we're just trying to make sure you're aware that we know that these things actually happen. And recently the question was presented, well, how does that affect my child learning here? Well, from, from both our experience, especially uh, from my experience personally, from what I've seen, that behavior from that environment, especially from that home environment, it comes from home to here. And not only will that kid's habits of what they picked up from the parents or from the environment, it will rub off on the other children, giving them really forming bad thoughts into bad habits, which first it starts with the thoughts and then it becomes choices, then it becomes action, then it becomes a habit later on if it's not corrected at a particular earlier point. So the best thing that I keep seeing, well, the worst case I keep seeing is that most of the children from these environments are interacting with other children from different environments. You got different levels. And when you see the negative, especially if there's a negative strongly overriding the positive, that child from that positive background will start to act the same way, start following the kid that does the negative, which we tend to see a lot most of the time, especially when we're doing warm ups or doing kata or counterattacks or just basically up and down of the front stance of any kind. This is where I start seeing and we start seeing it just by how they interact with one another. Like, or interact with us by, by a negative standpoint by saying, oh, this is too much, oh, this is too this, interrupting the class flow, which is something that you definitely don't want. Teachers from public schools, you definitely saw this. You could probably relate to this. You probably have students that from those environment, from a negative environment, where your classroom could be running smoothly as you always want it, but then there's always that one or two kids, and next thing you know, that interruption begins to grow with more than two, and then it starts to spread. Now, next thing you know, you're losing control of the entire class. Correct. This has happened on multiple occasions, and we've noticed the problem, and this is now becoming almost a pandemic of itself. Right. <laughs> I mean... We have to try to tame the students and get them to conform to the behavior they're supposed to have yes. in the class. And we never lower the standards. So the standard we've always had has stayed the same. People have to rise to the occasion and meet the standard. If they're not going to meet the standard, then they're not going to go that far in this dojo because we hold them to it, make them earn everything. Life as well. Now parents talked about what's best for their child a lot. We understand that. And especially from the stories that we heard, like, well, I grew up with nothing. I don't want my kid to have everything that I didn't have. Well, that's true, but also there are some things that they're gonna to have to learn, like, for example, being punctual to all meetings, which means, are you gonna be on time? Mm -hmm. That's a simple thing. Teachers from public schools to college, 
Now, college, they are not very strict on that, but it does tell a lot about a person if they try to go for a job. That's that right. characteristic will play out throughout their child's life. Like, look, if you don't tell them how important it is for them to show up, that interviewer, that person interviewing for a job that could change their life completely, with that habit intact, it's going to make them feel like, I can't trust this person. The employer saying this. If the employer saying, this person never shows up, how can I trust them being on time? We could have a project that could be due any moment. The project could change, and we don't have them available or her available. Right. Yeah, we prepare them for not just to do karate. Yes. We're preparing people to become successful in life. And that's what makes us very different than most martial arts schools. We focus on the mental aspect because the mind controls the body. Mm -hmm. And being punctual is just a simple thing that you can do. Someone might say, well, I can't get there in time. Well, we have other days. That's also, nice. if there's traffic, you can also make another plan to go around traffic. What it usually has to come down to is leaving the location you're coming from five to ten minutes earlier than what you normally do. And when you do that, you change the, the perception of yourself. Uh, people can trust you more because you're where you're supposed to be at the right time. In the military, they say if you're on time, you're late. Yes. But if you're early, you're on time. So when you're on time, it shows that you care, and it doesn't just matter from the kid, but also the parent. We've been waiting for self-driving cars to happen so that way we can give kids push-ups for being late because it's their responsibility to be on time. You know, we understand that parents want to do what their kids say they want to do. Students don't know always what's best for them, and the parents do. And most people don't understand what we're trying to do here, but we are basically a dojo that is stuck in the 80s and 90s. We're, we're wanting students to rise to the occasion like they were before the internet. Well, we just ended the class just now. Uh, we just had a, a really great sparring session of helping some of the uh, teenagers, and most, in this case it was mostly teenagers, and some of them are realizing that there are several students that have a talent but also have the ability, but there's one thing that this person did have that the others want to have, is that they were willing to go far with training. They were able to go practice. They were using that time and energy to do what they can do to get to the very level. But one thing that we are trying to say here, are we gonna make your kid into more like a super competitor or super weapon? Not like that at all. We're gonna make them a weapon, but they're not but gonna be using it abusively. They're gonna be able to defend themselves. It's not gonna be like Matrix. Let's get the Hollywood nonsense out. That's, that's true. A lot of people, they're coming in, uh, of course I started correcting from Karate Kid, people are coming in because of the TV show that's on Netflix right now. It's okay, because yes. it brings them into a martial arts realm and when you, Train in martial arts, especially traditional martial arts, uh, and you stick with it for a little while, you realize that you're learning something very special mm -hmm. and that it's not very common anymore. No. And so we're keeping these hopes and dreams alive in Chattanooga, Tennessee, by providing Chattanooga with the only authentic traditional karate school in this city. And there has been other styles in the past, but we are the only traditional karate school full time, which means more than three days a week for almost the past 20 years. And Seva Rogers has been doing karate for 20 years, and I've been doing martial arts as well for 37 years. So we just noticed this change with children, and it's been happening for a while, and we decided to team up and make this video to make you aware of it, that we're trying to really help, but you, we need your help as well. We cannot do this by ourselves. It takes a team to make the child or the student the best they can be in life. So sounds let's work like, together. It's almost like that saying, it, does, it takes a village. Right, it does yes. take a village, yep, to raise a child. So whenever one parent is, is coaching their kid and the other parent might not be around, well then your value of what you say dwindles as time goes on because they are tired of hearing the same person say the same thing. So that's why you have multiple teachers here. That way your child can listen to different teachers saying the same exact thing. Where the problem lies though is that we don't have a lot of parent engagement with their child. And we're talking about during and also after the class. Parents do often go on their phone. A lot. And we know and, this, and they're not really paying attention to their child. And that could be the reason, part of the reason why you might have difficulty with your child at home, because they're not receiving the attention they actually need. Now, I understand parents are busy, and they have a life to live, and there's a lot of technology these days, but it all comes, comes down to balance. You have to balance it out and give that child the attention they need, but hold them to a high standard. We need to stop saying perfect all the time. When we tell a child perfect, then there's nothing else to achieve. They already think they've already achieved it. So if we say that word all the time, it loses its value. 
Earning black belt in this school is like climbing a mountain. But once you get there, you realize all the things you learned up to this point was basics. It's really not that hard. You know, you just have to go through the process. It's a system to what we do. You need to trust the system, listen to the instructors, because we've done this for a little bit of time. The other thing is that Ryan and I have been working together for over 10 years. There is a parent who is a doctor, a pediatrician, and his kids have been training here for over a year. And the other day, I was talking to him while Ryan was teaching. And I said to him, you know that Ryan has autism? And he goes, what? Him? And he points to him, I'm like, yeah. He goes, no. So we have a doctor that sees thousands of people, but couldn't tell that Ryan has autism. So we have people like Ryan, who has autism, teaching those that do and don't have autism and other special needs. And he's the first person in our association to ever earn black belt. We try to keep telling you this. If this person can do it, you can do it. You have to tell yourself that I can do this. I will do this. And we need to bring everyone back to the way they were before the pandemic. Yes. And we all have to work together because this mental health conversation it's needs to be started because it is bad. Matter of fact, this mental issue is, I would say, bigger than the pandemic itself. It is. So we all want to live our normal life again, which people say never, things won't go back to normal. But I do believe they can. They can. But we have to work together towards that and help the children, mm -hmm. help the teenagers, because they're our future. They are. And we kind of let them down the past year and a half with the whole pandemic. We didn't have all the answers. But now that we're coming out of this, we need to get back to life, start holding the children up to the standard where they can become excellent yes. citizens and productive citizens for society. Thanks for watching.